Um, so today I have with me the wonderful Sandiswa Kuula. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Cece. You can help me there. And no, you are, Cece. <laughs> Sandiswa and I come a very, very long way um, back, all the way from corporate. And um, Sandiswa was um, instrumental in spearheading a lot of um, talent development initiatives through the vocational education system in South Africa. Um, and I met her through a mutual friend and one thing led to the other and we've been on many, many development and personal adventures since then. And um, Sandiswa completed Correct. a bachelor's degree in uh, social sciences. And um, I just thought, you know, let me ask her to join me in this conversation and this quest of finding out what it is and what it means for different people to be an empowered woman. So welcome, Sandiswa. <laughs> okay. I'm excited to have you here. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Cece. I'm excited too. So in your view, in all the years of your corporate experience, you know, obviously working with talent and potential, um, seeing a lot of women rise in the workplace, um, including yourself. I mean, I've seen you rise to stand in your full power as a woman and you paved your own, own way, so to speak. How do you view um, and, and what, what is an empowered woman for you? Um, I think for me, being empowered as a woman is all about opportunity. It's all about having access because you find a lot of women, especially in the line of work that I've been where there's a lot of potential. Once, once someone has opportunity and they have access to the system, they have access to job opportunities, they have access to business, for me, that is being empowered. Because for me, being empowered means you are able to do what you want to do. You are able to, um, you have this, because it's one thing to have the attitude of doing whatever that you want to do, but it's an added opportunity when you, you have excess of doing what you're supposed to be doing. So for me, empowerment means opportunity. It also means access. Access to money, access to business, access to positions, because again, you'll find that women are, are in business or are in corporates but they're not in the position that they are supposed to be because of them being women so for me all of those things speak to empowerment right and making your own rules as well because society has boxed us as women and they are expecting us to act a certain way and be a certain way and have certain positions so the minute i see a woman who is able to make their own rules and have a seat in, in a patriarchal society, for me, that speaks to empowerment. Right. And yeah. these opportunities that you are speaking about, um, how do you view those opportunities in terms of um, attracting it in, in your life? Or, you know, is it a situation of a system that creates the opportunity or is it up to us as women to find creative ways to actually generate those opportunities where do you think um the driver for that okay personally and i think you alluded to that earlier on um talking about the mutual friend i've had opportunities where people were able to assist me in getting into different positions and different spaces and I think it also helps that I I would like to say I'm outspoken so if 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 I need something and if I see an opportunity I sort of speak my way into it so I've been fortunate enough to be in a space where there's people who would like to help. But you'll find that currently, um, I know that there's this term where they say, it's who you know. 
And unfortunately, in the, in the corporate space, most cases, it's who you know for people, or especially women, to, to move up the corporate ladder. But ideally, everyone should have an equal opportunity. It should, all, it should all be about merit. It shouldn't be about who you know. Because sometimes you'll find that someone will be placed in a position because they are known, but they don't have the capacity to actually run that role. So for me, it's important to have equal opportunities for everyone and doesn't matter which gender, it's important that should you be able or capable of, of, of performing that job, automatically you should go in. Right. So that, that, that is how I see it. I'm not sure if I've answered your question, Sissy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, you're right. You, what I've always loved about you is your vocal indicator, you know, your mm -hmm. ability to speak up and, and sort of address the elephant in the room, um, you know, in, 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 in a fairly straightforward, no-nonsense way. And um, do I hear you saying that where you've seen opportunities, yes, you've had good people reaching and extending a hand to you, but also you, you use the words, you started to speak to that opportunity. Um, Correct. To actually attract and bring it closer. So, so you, you, you were, you're saying that, um, and I'm hoping I'm understanding this correctly, that as an, a woman, we, we can also create our opportunity by addressing and by speaking up, having a voice, right? Correct, correct. And, but however, having said that, again, support is very important because you find that women in spaces where they are very vocal but they don't have support so adequate support is important because it's pointless of speaking in an open vacuum where nobody hears you and it's also important to speak to the right people it wouldn't help for me to speak to somebody who will not be able to assist me i'm in the hr space so speaking to somebody in marketing might not really help me where I want to go. But right. speaking to the right people and also I have the support, support of other women, which, which, which I see now very often, which is something that I didn't see before. Support of other women is also important, but support in general. When you see somebody who, is, who has a potential of being something in an organization, it's very important when they speak out not to be seen as being... Um, what's the word as being rude or as being um i can't think of the word now but it's important that whoever speaks they have the support of may of making sure that they are in the right position to actually deliver what they're supposed to do right and, and perhaps you know in speaking speaking to the heart you know and and making sure that the way in, in which we use our voice as a woman, um, you know, carries that energy, carries that authority, Correct. because we address the heart. And, and I Correct. like what you are saying about women drawing together, because so often, and especially in the corporate space, it's, it becomes a competition instead of an individual competition, instead of uh, us viewing each other as a team in the same organization to help each other and pull each other forward, you know, um, you know instead of getting this interdepartmental cancer where departments and within even the same department, we start tearing each other down um, instead of building each other up. And um, Correct. Have you found that, um, you know, as we're in the leadership positions that you've been, um, that you were able to make a difference um, to extend the hand to other people in the way that a hand was extended to you? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um, I, I've always been a believer of paying it forward. And because people believed in me, I, I've also made it my mission to believe in other people as well. And um, I'll sort of say I have an eye for people who sort of not sure of themselves. And I try to actually encourage them because once 
in my life before I was in that position where I wasn't really sure of myself or wasn't really sure of my capabilities, someone saw it and somebody pushed me and encouraged me to be who I am today. So I have. Um, I've been um, fortunate enough into being in leadership or uh, management positions. I've been in a HR. So um, for me, my role is if you see somebody struggling, help them. If you see somebody who, who is there, but they're not sure whether they're there, whether they, they can be able to do that particular task or not, assist them in realizing their opportunity because I'm who I am today because a lot of people saw something in me that I didn't see at the time they encouraged me to do what I think was right, and here I am today. So I do that all the time, whether in business or in, in, in my personal space as well. Yeah, and that, that's what I've always admired about you, Kandiswa, is your, it, it just confidence oozes out of you, but it's not a cocky arrogance. It's a, it's a sister that's owning yourself. You own your space, you, you, mm -hmm. you embrace, the good and the bad, that makes sense, you know. I always get a sense of, yes, it does. of you loving your whole person, um, warts and all. And, and, and that's what I've always noticed about you. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and maybe that touches on, on a lot of what we've said thus far. But for you, what, does, what do you see as a woman's greatest strength? Um, knowledge of self. Um, along the years, I've, I've learned to understand myself better and in knowing what I can and what I cannot do. I think we, as women, we fall in a trap of trying to be super women <laughs> and trying to do everything and be everything to everyone all the time. I've learned to know my powers and know my capabilities. If I'm in a space where I see that I'm drowning and I don't understand or I know that I can't do something, I, I'm the first person to stop and say, I can't, I need help. Mm -hmm. It has been a very difficult process for me because I always thought I could do it. But up until I fell, then I realized that, no, I can't do everything. So I think for me, what's important is knowing yourself. What, what, what can you do and what can't you do? Yes. And whatever that you cannot do, be brave enough to say, please, I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about or I don't have an idea of what I'm doing. Can you help me? Asking for help is very important because that's where you, you gain your knowledge and that's where you gain your confidence as well, knowing exactly what you do and how you do it. So for me, knowledge of self is important. And, and, and yeah, self-awareness, because sometimes we, we, we push ourselves to a corner that we don't realize that we are now in danger. So being aware of when to stop, when to start and when to continue, for me, that is important. That is, that's an absolutely amazing answer. And, you know, I, I love what you say is, you know, there was this, this sort of feminine liberation movement and, and we kind of moved into a space where, no, I, I can do everything. I have to prove that I'm capable. And, and it's, it's, it's actually moving to a space where we as women um, can be okay with being vulnerable but also okay with saying, you know what, I actually can't draw or I don't want to draw that hole in the wall. Um, Sorry. Don't you mind helping me with that? And there's absolutely no shame in us asking for help on the tasks that, as you say, doesn't fall within our natural, um, or that's not authentic to us. You know, we don't have to, be able to do everything to prove to the world that we are worthy. I love, love the information um, around that. Brilliant. Correct, correct. Brilliant. Yeah, because I, I, I've seen a lot of people where if they define women, they define these strong beings who are able to do anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And because of what I've seen in the women around me when I was younger, I, I, I sort of feel sorry for them because 
they have tried to prove themselves to other people by doing things that they totally cannot do. Mm. So you'll find that You'll find a woman who can't be vulnerable because they don't want to be seen as weak. You'll find a woman who will be doing everything because they want to be seen as equal to men. We are not equal to men. We are women. So for me, that I'm with it or I'm not with it. Is it. I'm just who I am and I'm able to do whatever that I can be able to do. And if in situations where I find myself not knowing how to do something, I raise my hand and say, no, I can't do this. Right. And not feeling ashamed that I can't do everything because um, it's humanly impossible to do everything anyway. Yeah. So I think for me, as I've grown, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm learning to sit back and watch other people doing things that they are good at. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've learned to stand up and do things that I know very well that I can do. And I've also learned to put my hand up and say, how do you do it? Um, I, I, I thought it, it, it's, it's two, two, three, and this person, I'm four, five, six, and I learn about it. And then I will be gaining new skills through learning from other people. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and what has for you been the result um, for a woman who has... Um, sort of extended themselves almost too much into trying to be everything, trying to do anything. Have you seen any results or fruit of that in their life and, and, and or your own life? And what would you see, see or say those were? Um, personally, total burnout. Because you... you because you try to be other people you try to do what everyone is doing to, 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 to belong so personally I've, uh, i'm not living up to my total capability because i'm trying to be everything to everyone and i, I i've seen women around me where they they, they also try and because of some of the social standings as well, you'll find that, for an example, a single mother who will try to, 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 to do the double roles, mm. to do what a father is expected to do and do what a mother is expected to do. And unfortunately, the results will be with, the, with, with, with their kids, where their kids now don't know exactly what's going on. And sometimes this touches in relationships as well. And because of a lot of... Um, sitting down and trying to understand myself i've also picked up some of the um, i'll call it weaknesses on my side where because i was raised by a single mother she she sort of tried to be everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i will say that she did a good job but in return i find myself trying to understand my feminine side and my masculine side because now my mother was able to, 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 to juggle everything. And growing up, I thought juggling everything was it. So you'll find that sometimes in relationships, for example, I struggle because I, I'm not used to knowing, to being vulnerable, for an example, to asking for help, for an example. Because I, I was brought up knowing that every, you can be able to do everything. So it works, but sometimes you 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 faces I've done disservice to myself by, by overexerting myself and thinking that I am able to do this. Um, I'm not allowed to feel this because it's weak. I'm not allowed to think about this because I've been viewed as as not worthy. So I must just take it and do it because I'm strong and I personally and from people around me as well. Shu, mm. Goddess, you're speaking to my heart on so many levels. I, I totally mm. know what you are saying, and I'm sure there are so many people who can relate to what you're just saying. And, and you just, again, saying it as it is, and that's one of the mm -hmm. things I absolutely adore about you. You just say it as it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
helps. It helps when you do that. They, uh, there are no misunderstandings. You just <laughs> said it like it is, and that's just what it is. And I think for me, having to sit down and understand yourself, you, you get to understand a lot of things about life in general as well, because mm -hmm. one has to sit and understand their faults and understand the, 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 their, their wins as well. And by there, you are able to move forward into being a better person. Right, right. And, um, you know, the one thing that I often look at in, in life and, and I find becomes more and more important is people, um, and in our case now, women that we can look up to. Um, do you have someone in your life that you look up to or, or um, someone that you see as an example of an empowered woman that you can share with us? Hmm. When I saw this question, I smiled to myself because I've always been viewed as strange when it comes to these type of questions. <laughs> I don't have that person. Reason being is reason being is that people are they're very dynamic. People have different things. So I sort of pick up good things from different people, whether in in the public front or personally. So for an example, um, there is a lady I follow her on social media. She's called Dr. Taleng Mufukeng. I love her for one thing. She has been very vocal when it comes to sexual health, which is something as a black community, it wasn't something that we, I didn't grow up knowing how to delve around the sexual health and and and, when, and and she even released a book about it so she's one of the women who inspires me to speak your mind especially on topics that were viewed as taboo yes she, she she's out there yes. she's young she speaks she makes you understand and she speaks in a language that everyone gets right. so I, I get inspired yeah. by her because for me it's all about we are women, we are human beings, and whatever that affects us, it's important for us to share. Mm -hmm. A second person is very controversial these days, especially during lockdown, is Dr. Lamini Zuma. The reason why I love her is, uh, although she was very instrumental in us not having alcohol, which I'm not happy about, <laughs> but I think... Uh, <laughs> but what I love about <laughs> No, I'm really not happy, but she had to do what she had to do. But I think for me, when I see her in the political space, I get inspired because when you think politics, you think men. Yes. You think power. And for me, the reason that one, she contested on being the ANC president was big for me. I, I was actually rooting for her, although I, I didn't have any powers to vote for her at the, at the space. But the fact that she stood in, in a space where it's known that it's male dominated was inspiring for me. And even now during, during the, 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 the lockdown and COVID, she might be controversial, but she speaks out. Mm. And what I like about her is that she's not, she's not a, a typical leader who just says, it's going to be like this because I said so. Yeah. Whatever she says, whether you agree with her or not, she, she substantiates her, her reasons. Mm -hmm. She will tell you that um, uh, we, are, we are banning cigarettes because of one, two, three. And for me, she inspires me to say, yes, you will not be popular. Yes, your, 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 your idea might be different from others, but stand your ground and explain why you're doing it. Because a lot of people were not agreeing with her, but what I loved about her is she had a reasons. They might have been wrong, they might have been right, but she was able to support her argument effectively, whether you liked it or not, you certain things. And because of her profession of her qualifications as well as a medical doctor, for me it made sense. Mm -hmm. For me, it was not a politician talking, it was one a mother who was concerned about people's health. It was to a medical doctor who has medical reasons on why she's saying what she's saying. So she, 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 she inspired me a lot in the last few months. 
And obviously the, the, the women, other women are women in my space. Like for example, my mother, I alluded to that earlier on where I'm saying she, she raised us three kids alone. Mm. And although if I could, I could go back and say, hey, woman, just relax. Just now have your time to yourself. She did well. And when I think of strength, I think of her as well. Because there are lots of things that I wasn't aware she was going through because she made sure that her kids were okay. Mm. And for me, that's strength. For me, that says I will be selfless and make sure that what is important to me is taken care of. Sometimes I remember I was talking to a friend of mine the other day that I wish sometimes I could go back to my mother and say, you know what, we were okay during this time. Now it's time for you to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. But I feel that she lost time in taking care of herself because she wanted to make sure that we are okay. And for me, that selfless uh, 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 love is strength for me because if she, she could have decided to do something else. Yeah. But she made sure that her three kids had, were, were, were so independent that we are able to live our lives independently with because of what she was able to sacrifice for, for, for us as kids. Mm -hmm. So for me, that speaks strength. And again, my grand, uh, may I so rest in peace. I, I stayed with my grand for almost 10 years and most of my adult life and my adult learning was because of the lessons that I learned from her, where she was able to do a lot of things silently she moved silently but she made sure that she did things that were supposed to be done mm -hmm. so for me again she, she she showed me that it's possible mm -hmm. it's not easy but when when you when, when you put your mind to it and forget about whether what, what other people think take things according to your own pace do things according to your, your, your capabilities, when you're tired, sit down. When, when, when you've gained your strength, stand up and do whatever that you have to do. But have an end goal to say, this is what I want to do. Don't put yourself under pressure to say, I want to do this in five years because life happens and you'll find that in five years time, you're not where you want it to be. But for the fact that you have a goal, whether you fall or not, you'll continue to do what you have to do for you to be able to reach those goals. So I think for me, that is why I do not have one person that I look up to. I look up to different people depending on what it is that I need inspiration on. That's, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, I, you know, what you are saying about, I'm so glad that you are saying it from a child's perspective, mom, I so wish you would have taken time for yourself, to care for yourself, mm -hmm. because I've mm -hmm. seen people coming into the practice, mothers who are just always self-sacrificing and find it really, really hard to prioritize themselves and their own personal and emotional health. And then oh, right. saying it from a child's perspective, mother, I wish, I, I appreciate what you've done for us three children, but I wish there were times where you actually took some time for you. So, so that Great. is so amazing. And, and what I was saying about um, your ancestors and connecting, you know, we, we live such isolated lives, but the generations and the ancestors, you know, to, to have the, the, the people who, who came before us, you know, in our bloodline, to, to draw on their wisdom so that we don't have to start from scratch and learn all the mistakes and do the same, you know, have the same hurt play out over and over again, but that we have almost that handover of that pattern of wisdom and, and that we start not from a blank slate, but actually <clears throat> maybe from one or two steps forward because we rested at the feet um, of our elders. And that's something Sorry. in the African culture that I find sourly lacking in in the modern age which i so appreciate is you know you know sitting quiet at the feet of of those with more experience than us and actually drawing from that in creating a better world and i i love what you said about it I lo what you said about 
and Dr. Tlamini Zuma, and it just touched so many places um, and, 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 and your perspective. And this is what I've always appreciated about you. You always, you're like a waff of fresh air that comes in with a perspective. <laughs> We're in a time where everyone, as you say, is not all too happy about the alcohol ban, but um, seeing the good in, in a person who, in a woman, a fellow sister, who's trying to, to stand her ground in a, in a very masculine um, and traditionally male-dominated environment. Thank you so much for that fresh, uh, fresh perspective, because it just, yeah, you just always bring something something good to the table that's why i love love connecting with you nah, thank you <laughs> thank you thank you sissy thank you and these were um you're a woman on my own heart and um I've, I've there's a reason why i've asked you to, to come on the call because i've always seen and sensed that empowerment in you um i've always watched you from afar and sometimes close by and uh, my wish for you is just sister to have wings and fly and do what it is that you came here to do and you know take that stamp and, and put your stamp on the world in your authentic way because we need women like you to rise and and and, and create the new world um, that we are going into and um, I have a lot of respect and a lot of love for you and I will always always count you as one of my sisters Thank you so much, Sissy. It is, it was great um, getting this invitation. And like I said to you, sometimes you you get shocked of what other people see in you that you don't see because all we do is 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 run this race called life, not thinking about what is it that we do and not being aware of what other people see in you. So thank you for the for for the reminder um, because we we run and and when you run you run and you don't know and you don't see what other people see and it, it, for me it's encouraging to to always have that pe that the person who will always say you're doing good even if sometimes i have no idea what going what's going on but the the, the constant reminder for me is really important so thank you thank you thank you oh i love you from my heart we'll chat soon Thank you very much, Susie. Love you too. Bye. Bye.